there is a new option, gathering momentum in Whitehall that would see civil servants working furiously to hold on to as much commercial union as possible in the event of a political schism. It's even got a neologism of its own. Flexit. Newsnight's Chris Cook reports. Whichever way we vote in this referendum, Britain will go on an uncertain journey. The destinations on offer are not too clear. Especially as campaigners fighting on each side cannot promise what future ministers will do. Newsnight has learned that civil servants are seriously considering a route for Brexit that is not the same as the official campaign's plan. The question on the referendum ballot sheet is extremely simple. Should we remain members of the European Union or should we leave it? But on both sides, there are enormous uncertainties. For Remain, we don't know how the future political and economic circumstances of the EU will change it. For Leave, the principal set of unknowns are about our future trading relationships with our big partners, particularly the European Union itself. The official Vote Leave campaign wants us at some distance from the EU. They argue that that would let us trade more with faster growing parts of the world, cut EU red tape and cut net immigration. If Britain does vote to go it alone and leave the European Union, an important principle to consider is this. The more that Britain uses its new liberties to vary its rules from those applying across the European Union, be they about veterinary care or immigration, the more likely it is that Britain will find itself facing barriers to trading with the EU, be they tariffs or be they simple administrative barriers. Vote Leave's principal argument is that any losses we might suffer on access to the EU's internal market will be more than made up for by trading elsewhere in the world and by the loss of unnecessary EU regulation. To its fans, the appeal of Vote Leave's plan, which envisages a lot of difference from now, is precisely that it would change things and fast. But others want a gentler Brexit. It's important to remember that even if Vote Leave win on June the 23rd, Vote Leave won't be running the government and they won't be deciding what our future relationship with the E will be. That will be up to the officials, ministers and MPs here in Westminster. Now, I've been speaking to a lot of civil servants who are likely to be involved in any renegotiation of our relationship with Europe if we vote to leave. And one thing's quite striking. Their vision for what Britain's life would be like outside the EU is quite different to the one being put forward by Vote Leave. A number of very similar plans are being considered in Whitehall on the potential road ahead from a Brexit vote. These route maps by pro-Brexit thinkers are known by names like Flexit, Europe 2.0, or, in Roland Smith's case, Liberal Leave. How would you go about leaving the EU? In a multi-step process, basically, we have to initially protect the economics of this thing. That is where the real concerns are. So that means moving to an EEA position, rather like Norway and Iceland. And that means retaining lots of EU rules and regulations? At that point, it means retaining a lot of stuff to do with the single market. So yes, we do actually jettison a lot of other things to do with political union and we jettison some big policies like the common agricultural policy and common fisheries policy. But you'll keep immigration? At that moment we will have to, yes. Lots of civil servants like a Norway-style European Economic Area membership as the first leg in any Brexit journey to minimise economic disruption. We could then disentangle further at a slower speed on regulation and immigration. Some even think this strategy could prove a model for other EU members. You would have a Europe which is a small, incredibly integrated space where you have one single currency, where those countries really pool sovereignty, in effect become something like the United States. And you have everyone else in Europe who is part of a free trade space in close partnership with Eurozone Europe, but it's not done in, in, in as intensely uh, regulated and, and, and sort of controlled away. Um, it would allow those who want maximum integration to have it, it would allow everyone else to do it at their own pace. What's wrong with that? But these schemes have a big political weak spot. Why is it you think Vote Leave haven't gone for your, your roadmap? 
I think perhaps because they have chosen immigration particularly to go big on. Immigration is a very big issue in this country, as we all know, as I accept as well. My issue with it is that the economy is a bigger issue, and that keeps coming up in polls time after time. And therefore, for me, that is actually what we need to focus on in the first instance. The Remain campaign has plenty of criticism of this model as well. Well, the Leave campaign have said if we leave the EU, they want us to leave the single market, leave the EU entirely and negotiate a new free trade deal. So if we were to follow the Norwegian EEA model, that wouldn't have a mandate and it wouldn't achieve the things the Leave campaign say they want to achieve. So we wouldn't be able to stop free movement of people, Norway accepts that. We'd still have to accept most EU rules with no say over them at all and we'd still have to pay into the EU budget. So it's far worse than the deal we have now. Today, BBC News revealed that lots of pro-Remain MPs want EEA membership if we vote out. They'll have Whitehall allies too. But if Vote Leave win this campaign, ministers may feel they have to cut immigration, especially as the Prime Minister might well soon be from Vote Leave. This is what happens when you pose simple referendum questions on very complex topics.